The loveliest masterpiece of the heart of God is the love of a mother. Hello, my friends, and welcome to True Heroes. Today, we're going to look at what little we know about St. Anne. And in fact, what we do know it does not come from the gospel, but only comes from tradition. So this is going to be a bit of a complicated episode, but I'm going to try to keep it brief. So the Gospels, or the Scriptures rather, are made up of a bunch of books written by different saints, right? Some of the Apostles and St. Paul and whatnot. There were certain other books that were written that were initially presented as legitimate works of the Apostles and of saints, but then later taken out. For example, there is the Gospel according to St. Thomas that is out there. There is the Gospel according to St. James. There's even a Gospel according to Judas Iscariot that is out there, which is obviously um, a lie, right? It's not actually written by him. We know what happened to him from the other Gospels. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because the names of the grandparents of our Lord and the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary comes from one of these books. It is the Gospel according to St. James and is supposed to be the St. James the Less, so not St. James the Greater, which we celebrated yesterday, but written by St. James the Less, which is, has been proven to be not true. However, there are certain things from that book that we have taken and has been passed down through tradition, which include the names of St. Anne and St. Joachim. So for this here podcast, I'm just going to read to you um, the section that talks about St. Anne wishing to have a child. So the Gospel according to St. James talks about kind of how St. Elizabeth and St. Zachary were both barren for a long time, right? They were old and they hadn't had any children. St. James, St. James Gospel, the, the Gospel according to St. James, asserts that this was the same case for St. Anne and St. Joachim. And they were both older and they didn't have any children. They were lamenting the fact they didn't have any children. So I'm just going to read to you the passage here of St. Anne's prayer to God so that she would have a child. Quote, It was one of the great festival days of the Lord. In spite of extreme sorrow, Anne laid aside her mourning garments and adorned her head and clothed herself with her nuptial robes. And about the ninth hour, she went down to the garden to walk. Seeing a laurel, she sat down in its shade and poured forth her prayer to the Lord God, saying, God of my fathers, bless me and hear my supplication, as thou didst bless Sarah and didst give her a son. And raising her eyes to heaven, she saw in the laurel a sparrow's nest, and sighing, she said, Alas, of whom was I born to be thus a curse in Israel? To whom shall I liken me? I cannot liken me to the birds of the air, for the birds are blessed by thee, O Lord. To whom shall I liken me? I cannot liken me to the beasts of the earth, for they too are fruitful before thee. To whom shall I liken me? I cannot liken me to the waters, for they are not barren in thy sight, and the rivers and the oceans full of fish praise thee in their heavings and in their peaceful flowing. To whom shall I liken me? I cannot liken me even to the earth, for the earth too bears fruit in season and praises thee, O Lord. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by and said to her, Anne, God has heard thy prayer. Thou shalt conceive and bear a child, and thy fruit shall be honored throughout the whole inhabited earth. And in due time, Anne brought forth a daughter and said, My soul has magnified this hour. And she called the child Mary. So that is the account that the Gospel according to St. James, the pseudo-canonical book, gives us of the account of St. Anne and her giving birth to Our Lady. And really, that is all we know of St. Anne. We don't even know that for sure. That is a tradition that has been passed down, uh, originating from one of the false books written of 
well, well, not really the Bible, but was presented as a book that was written by one of the apostles, which turned out not to be. So, from what we have of St. Anne, what traditions we have of St. Anne, let us ask her to have a love for the Blessed Virgin. She had, of course, the love of a mother. Let us have a love for her as as our mother, for Our Lady is, in fact, our mother and our protectress here on earth. So let us ask her to protect us, and let us ask St. Anne to help us to love her as our mother and our protectress. Tomorrow, I am going to be very busy, so I will not be able to do a podcast. So next time, we will continue with the life of St. Martha, the sister of St. Mary Magdalene. Until then, God bless you all, my friends. St. Anne, pray for us.